Hi guys, hope you're well. So, the wife and kids are out. It's Thursday dinner time. Let's talk watches. The king is dead. Long live the king. It's all about the Rolex Submariner. So guys, this is a previous generation Submariner now. Pfft, bit worthless, isn't it? Who wants an old version Submariner? I'll tell you what, <laughs> I won't complain. This is absolutely stunning. This has been loaned into me by Workington Watchers. And I've got to say, it never fails to impress. Just look at that. It is absolutely fantastic. I love this watch. I've owned it once. Sold it, bought the no date version, sold it. I do regret it, I do miss it, but they were thick lugs. I used to dig in a little bit, so that was one of my bugbears. But actually, if they put a 70 hour power reserve in this watch, nobody's gonna complain, are they? That'd have been enough, it's perfect as it is. Everything about this watch is absolutely stunning. I do want one back, this is, you know, got the juices flowing within me again to get another Submariner. I absolutely love this thing. This would be the one watch that I would keep forever. If I, you know, if I were giving up watches tomorrow and I weren't interested anymore, I'd just have a Submariner and that's all I'd need. It'd be my all day, every day watch, it's perfect. And even this one, it's a bit battered. Work it and watch what are you doing? It's horrendous, but it, it gets away with it. It's absolutely fantastic. So let's take a closer look at the Submariner and oh, I'm excited for this one. Let's go. So here we are with the most iconic watch ever made hands down for me it is opinion it is my opinion but i think it's a popular opinion as well people just fawn over this watch and i can see why it's just a stunning bit of kit so a, a very brief timeline of the rolex submariner 1954 it was a 36 mil sub and that's when it was first created in the 50s can you imagine the lifestyle, the clothes, the cars, you know, it was all a long, long time ago. And the 36mm sub was created then, but short after in 1959, so 61 years ago, they changed it to a 40mm. And it's changed only last week to a 41 So it is literally minuscule changes. It has been a 40mm sub for decades. And it's been a fantastic watch. They've beefed it up, they've given it the maxi case, the maxi lugs, the maxi hands, the ceramic bezel is a, a game changer in my opinion, because the face of it there still looks amazing to this day, like the first day Workington Watches bought it. Yeah, granted, it, you know, it's a bit more battered there, but nothing a quick polish wouldn't fix. I could probably get my sandpaper on that for him if he wants. In fact, I might treat him to it. I'll sandpaper it down before I send it back to him. I'm sure he'll thank me later. This actually featured in the first four James Bond movies. So James Bond is all about Amiga and the Sea Master and has been for nearly 30 years now. But the first four movies was with a Rolex Submariner. So a lot of people think that this is the first James Bond watch. Kind of is. But you've got to say Amiga are the top dogs now on the James Bond movie type of things. Uh, for 15 years, I would say, yes, this was classed as a tool watch. So it was with the, the British Royal Navy, uh, the Canadian Royal Navy. So, yeah, it was a tool watch shipped out to people in the military as a timekeeping instrument. But 15 years after the Rolex and Mariner was created, guess what they did with it? It had an all-solid gold version of it. So... That's not very tool-like. It's all about luxury, and that's exactly where Rolex were heading as way back as 1969. So that is a long time ago. They brought out a solid gold version, uh, and then it was in 1981, I think, they brought out the two-tone version. So for decades now, a long, long time, but, you know, some of us weren't even born. Uh, I was in 1981. I'll give that one away. <laughs> But yeah, so it, they've been heading towards luxury for a long, long time. Absolutely stunning piece. Give it a good wind now. Oh, that is nice. You know, a six-year-old watch, it's so smooth, it's so fantastic. So yeah, I can't argue with this watch. I would have this watch over any others if it was my pick, if I had to choose, if I had to, had to choose. So it's got the easy, not the easy link, the... Uh, 
but I can't remember what it's called. I can't even work it. I'll try to look through a camera. Ah, there we go. It just slides up so it gives you 20 mil of adjustment, which is crazy. So, with someone with smaller wrist, you could share this watch with your wife and she could trim it down to the bottom end and you could squeeze in the top end. Not that I'd let her anywhere bloody near it. But that is a fantastic, stunning watch. There's nothing bad you can say about it. What can you say? Yeah, they are a bit big, the lugs, but it gives it presence. For a 40mm watch, that is just enough comfort and enough presence all in one. It's a fantastic beast of a watch. And there's nothing I should be selling my Air King and my date just. Hmm, maybe not. That does look nice. Oh, that is a bit of luxury. Oof. Oh, it's a tough call, isn't it? Oh, right guys, that's enough. Let's go back. So everyone will have their thoughts on the Rolex Submariner and will this new version be the best version? Yeah, I think it will. Uh, not by much, maybe a millimetre. Slimmer lugs. I mean, there's not much of a change in the new Submariner to this one, is there? And that's a really good thing because if you think of when this one first came out and the previous generation, the clasps weren't very good, the bezel was aluminium, so it was a real step up in, in quality, I think. So, but holding this one and the new one, there's not going to be much, is it? There's not going to be much in it at all. So, this is still a watch, even though it's, it's pushing you know seven years old. Still looks fantastic, still standing the test of time, still being accurate, still being a Rolex Submariner. Uh, it's got the ceramic bezel, so, you know, in an ideal world, when it's, it drops down to a previous model, like with Amiga or Braille, they, they come a, bit, a better price, don't they? But not with Rolex, that's the crap thing about it. And the good thing, that you know, they, they hold the value, but, you know, for us watch geeks, us watch enthusiasts that want to try and experience other watches, paying over retail for a six-year-old watch. A real kick in the nuts, isn't it? It's just, I don't think I could do it. Uh, unfortunately, I would rather go without than pay over retail for a six year old watch. I just, it beggars belief. No matter how good the quality is, I can't do it. So, I love the Rolex Submariner and I'm really glad that I got to experience this. It probably pissed me off a little bit, really, because I've realised how much I miss it and how much I want it. The first time I bought it, I don't think I could afford it really and I think that played on my mind a little bit and I ended up selling it and getting a Breitling. Uh, just general life, you've got bills to pay, haven't you? So I mean it was about four years ago, three years ago. I had a, a different job, you know, probably earned a little bit more money now. Not that I'm rich, certainly not I can't afford loads of Rolexes, but yeah, at that time I had a Submariner but I don't think my car was even <laughs> as much as my Submariner. So it's all about perspective and you know, lifestyles and you know dealing with it accordingly really so yeah it's interesting to see how you know looking at my wrist I was like wow I've got a Rolex Submariner but I didn't really feel I deserved it so I sold it got the Breitling we all went on holiday I think and I paid a couple of bills but that's life in it that's watches that's why the missus lets me get so many because if we need the money for something else I'll just sell them you know I don't associate feelings with watches I look down and think oh yeah they're nice but I don't have any emotional attachment to them. And I think that, that's a healthy place to be because if I got upset with all the watches that I had to sell to fund other things other than watches, <laughs> I'd be an emotional wreck. But it's all part of the crazy hobby that we're in. I love watches, the watch community. It's quite exciting, really. So this is the Rolex Submariner. Just a quick video. Right, guys, over and out. I'll see you in the next one.
30, di uh, 30 dinner time. <sighs> I'm too tired for this crap.